Hi guys, welcome to another episode of TC Talk. My name is Therese and thanks for stopping by. So today's episode is all going to be about film critics and I guess this started because I recently had the chance to actually see David Stratton and Margaret Pomerantz a few nights ago and if you don't know who those two people are, well for the past um, nearly 30 years they were the two behind the movie show and these two would basically give their reviews on movies. So it was a highly successful I guess. Um, um, TV show on SBS given that it lasted for 30 years but you know the mo movie and TV landscape has definitely changed quite a lot since then especially with the rise of social media so so where does the role of the film critic lie now especially you know with everybody on social media being able to you know give their give their reviews give their opinion and you know is there a sort of certification or what of um, title like how does someone become a movie critic? They just have to watch movies, in which case, well, that's fine. But who's the judge of um, who's the judge of that? And I guess this has probably been a long topic of discussion, especially in the filmmaking business when it comes to you know the realm of art, because you know, you know there are people out there that you know would argue that art is subjective, and maybe in that because of that. You're not, you know, you can't really be judged because everybody else, everybody has a different opinion on what makes good art. Uh, on that note, I can understand it, but I guess for me, it brings to mind that you know you can kind of see film as you know one of two things. You can see art as a form of artistic expression. Um, you know, definitely is part of if the director is author, the director's vision, their artistic expression. But you can also see, you know, film as very much a product, a business, and, you know, a point of service. Well, that is if, you know, for example, the point is to, you know, entertain people, the viewers, which arguably, for example, Marvel, Marvel is in the business of doing. So, yeah, so where does the role of the, um, you know, the film critic lie? So let me know in the comments below. And I guess, yeah. I guess it's just an interesting space now that we are nowadays because everybody, even people, you know, obviously even people that are anonymous can basically give their opinions on practically everything, let alone movies. So, you know, there, there are places, you know, aggregate sites such as IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes where, you know, you do have people um, that are actually certified movie critics, which, you know, this might be hard to believe, but I actually only realized this a couple of days ago because I was, you know, discussing this with a friend of mine. And yeah, I didn't actually realize that, you know, you can actually be a certified film critic. So yeah, um, what, what would that entail <laughs> exactly? I mean, maybe it's something like watching watching and some certain number of movies. I mean, to bring back to my original opening, David Shen has stated that he has probably watched over 30, what, 3,000 or 30,000? Either way, it's a lot. So I guess, you know, I know maybe you do have to have some sort of knowledge um, of movies and seen, you know, enough to actually know what you're talking about. Maybe you, it probably would help to be in the film industry business in some way. Yeah, let me know what you think about that. And yeah, it is interesting because, I mean, we also did end up discussing all about, you know, how these opinions, you know, well, everybody has a bias. I mean, there's no really, there's no real escaping that. I guess as long as you can acknowledge, acknowledge where your biases lie, you can, you know, people can take your reviews with the grain of salt, um, with with everyone else, everything else. But um, it was interesting because you know there has been um, a point of discussion, and this is something that you know occurs with you know game reviews as well, and that is all about um, access journalism and how that you know can sway you know, reviews and, you know, journalists' opinion and movie reviews. And by that, I mean, whilst, you know, um, reviewers may not be expli explicitly bribed, what these, you know, these large-scale production companies do is they basically, you know, go out, like, reach out to these, you know, reviewers, um, basically imply that, you know, they do give them, you know, uh, premiere access to the movies for review and you know what ha what I think what I've heard that has happened 
is that if you know, the view views have have been less than favorable, um, you know the the production company pretty much just cuts a connection for future movie releases. So whilst you know they're not exactly going, they're giving them money to you know paying them off. I, you can you can sort of see what happens, right? Where you know in, there is an incentivization for for reviews to to I guess be more softer than they would be in order to keep that connection and good you know that good bridge going. Do you see what I mean? So that is something to be um to be talked about. Um, that's interesting to be talked about. Um, so yeah, and I guess. Yeah, let me know what you think. I guess this, I'll be cutting this a little bit short. Um, so, you know, have you had experience with movie critics? Um, maybe an honest over the internet, maybe in real in real life. Um, it is interesting. Um, I guess I, I, the other thing I found fascinating was that David Chan, you know, writes for, um, among other things, still writes for The Australian. And yeah, I guess it's still, you know, intrigues me that, you know, the paper printed media is still something you know, that's out there these days, despite, you know, everything that you may find on the internet, for better or for worse, you may also, you know, comment and let me know what your thoughts are on that. I guess, you know, if it, if you're going to be accessible, at least that's another avenue to be accessible, especially for people that, you know, may not have, you know, internet or especially if you're, you know, elderly, um, have difficulty understanding how to use a computer and the internet. I have, you know, yeah, I can certainly understand, relate, understand that. So I, I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, so let me know what your thoughts are on um, film critics are. And, you know, this can also lead to a discussion of, you know, what, you know, discussions of films as art or, you know, business product. That's probably is something that, you know, you may never have a complete answer to, but, you know, it's worth talking about. I'll leave it at that. So until next time, I'll see you then.